All right, guys, welcome back to the Right Now Powder Coating channel. As always, sponsored by CTSA, where you can find all of your Electron powder coating equipment, supplies, as well as spare parts. Today, we're going to be talking about handrails or any other well mitt that you might be coating in your shop and typical issues that we find when we are coating them. Have you ever powder coated a railing or a weld mitt and when you pull that out of the oven, you notice either pinholes or fish eyes or that little streak where it looks like moisture came out and ruined your paint job? This is almost always one of a few things, whether it's air escaping from a pinhole, from your weld, oil, or other contaminants that you didn't get cleaned up or outgassed properly while you were coating the part. So let's get into exactly how you can prevent this and the proper way to prep your parts so that this never happens to you. So usually what happens is while they're welding the two pieces together, they're actually sealing in oil, grease, air, and other contaminants that can't escape. And if they don't have it fully welded up or there's little pinholes or releases in the metal, when you get that part up to temperature, and that's usually how long it takes, it's going to start expanding and escaping. And that's what comes out and ruins your paint job. Another issue with these parts is mill scale, and there's not enough shops out there that are treating the mill scale properly. You are asking for failure if you leave the mill scale on your parts. Now I understand a lot of you guys don't have big blasting setups, but you need to do everything you can to get that mill scale off if you want that part to have a really nice long life, especially if it's out in the elements. The first thing we always do when the parts arrive at our shop is we will inspect them closely. We'll make sure that the slag and all that stuff is cleaned up. And then we'll usually take a rag with some lacquer anything that will cut that grease and we wipe the parts down completely. We wanna get all that thick, grimy stuff, anything from weld splatter um, release or just the oil for manufacturing or even the oils off your hands. We wanna get all of that off the part before we do any sort of mill scale removal. Um, we don't wanna embed that into the metal. So make sure you wipe your parts down. Something as simple as grabbing a rag and some lacquer thinner and take the time to make it clean and you'll be way, way better off than you would had you not. To deal with mill, mill scale, there's a couple ways to do that. If you have the proper setup, you can actually blast it all off, which is what I would recommend if you're able to do it. You can also use things like phosphate or an acid etching remover. Um, talk to your chemical supplier. I know Lincoln Chemical, who we work with, they have a really nice chemical for removing mill scale. It's going to remove everything that's loose and going to flake off to begin with. Really want to get your metal down to a really nice, clean, uniform look, especially on those edges. If you need to supplement with some hand sanding or grinding or a wire wheel, I would recommend you do that. Again, if you can sandblast, that's 100% the quickest, easiest way to go. I have even seen people use vinegar and soak rags and leave it on there to remove that mill scale. It will work. It just takes a lot of time, like think 24 hours, and you need to make sure it stays saturated. And then you can either wipe it off or pressure wash all that mill scale right off. The next thing I would recommend doing is putting the parts into your oven for an outgas. Now I don't normally outgas still, but when it comes from a fabricator, it's going to be greasy. It's going to be oily and that stuff's going to be down inside the tubes and you're gonna need to bake it out to prevent it from escaping after you've powder coated it. A good rule of thumb is to crank up your oven a little higher than you would actually bake a part at. We normally bake about 420, so when we're out gassing, we usually put the parts in at about 450 and we'll run it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Just to get all of that out of there, we'll bring it out and we'll let it cool back down. But once the parts are cool, you're gonna wanna inspect everything again. Make sure that you've taken care of any contaminants, any splatter, anything that's not gonna make that part just look amazing after you've powder coated it. Last thing you really need to do is just blow it off, make sure there's no dust on it, and you should be ready to coat. Now when you get to coating, it's a lot like any other part. Make sure you have a really good ground, make sure your gun is set up for whatever powder you're spraying. If your railings are going outside, I strongly re recommend putting a zinc rich primer on your parts. We have videos with Zinc Rich explaining what that primer does and why it's important. And then doing a top coat of whatever color they want. Make sure that your top coat is UV stable. 
Um, if it scratches or mars easily, you might actually want to offer a clear coat and you can do that in a matte, a satin, or a high gloss clear coat just to give it a little more protection in those outdoor elements. Me personally, I powder coated some railings for my deck about two years ago in a satin black and that's all we, we did a primer and a satin and they still look phenomenal today. Last thing is once you put those parts into the oven, make sure you cure them fully. Now you need to find the thickest piece of metal that is on those rails and make sure that that part is getting to the temperature. There's overbake in all of these powders so you're not going to overbake the thinner metal as long as it's not dramatically different. Um, but you will underbake the thicker metal if you don't wait for that to get to the 400 degrees or whatever the manufacturer of the powder recommends. So the key steps to this, always outgas your parts, always remove your mill scale and oil. If you're welding the parts, make sure you're keeping those welds nice and uniform. Make sure you use a proper ground when applying the powder. You can do all of these things you should have no problem cranking out really nice, high quality finishes on all of your welded parts, your handrails, and more. Now, if you guys found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell because we plan on releasing a lot more of these tutorials.